Today we're talking about items that I do not buy anymore and boy are there a lot of them. I feel like when you start to be more intentional with your money and start adopting a minimalist mindset, you stop buying things that you bought just out of habit in the past. So here are some things that I stopped buying as a result of that. The first item that I stopped buying is physical books. I think I've talked about this before on my channel, but I used to spend all of my money on books. In high school, I used to take all of the money that I earned from my minimum wage part-time job and head on over to Barnes and Noble to spend all of my money on $20 books. Now, don't get me wrong, I still love the feel of physical books, but I've saved so much money by switching to a Kindle. And honestly, there are so many other perks to a Kindle that I don't miss physical books at all. This is my Kindle Paperwhite. I got it refurbished. And the great thing about this is that you can read it in the daytime. It looks exactly like regular paper. Or if you want to read at night, you can use the backlight on it and you don't even have to have a light on. I like to get my books off Libby, which is an app that ties directly to your library card. So it's completely free to use and I end up saving a whole lot of money because of it. The only exception I make to this rule is buying the occasional book that I think that I'm going to want to reference often. But overall the Kindle has been a complete game changer for me and I don't really miss physical books. Now onto the second item which I've stopped buying and that is plants. This one was really hard to come to grips with because as much as I would love to be a plant lady, it's just not not for me. I think it'll be different whenever I have my own house and I'm not on the go as much, but I tend to travel pretty often and when I do it's in large chunks like a couple of weeks at a time. I used to have a lot of plants in my tiny apartment and I've tried bringing them along with me whenever I do road trips and it really just doesn't work out well. But honestly even whenever I'm home for long periods of time I'm not very good at keeping plants alive still. So I've temporarily made the switch to just buying artificial plants and I don't think I'll be going back for a while. The next category of items which I have tried to stop buying completely is fantasy self items. If you've never heard of a fantasy self before, I have a whole video talking about the concept, so I won't go over it too much here, but essentially your fantasy self is a highly idealized image of not only who you want to be, but also who you want others to perceive you as being. For example, maybe you wish you were the kind of person that wakes up at 5 a.m. to go to a spin class every day, so you buy a bunch of equipment to set yourself up to be that person, but in reality you would just rather sleep in until 9 and do a home workout video. Sometimes it's really hard to identify when purchases are realistic or whether they're for your fantasy self, but I think in general just make sure you have the habit before you go out and buy a bunch of equipment for it. The next thing I've stopped buying entirely is uncomfortable clothing. I'm one of those people that values comfort over pretty much anything else in the fashion realm, so when it comes to my clothes if it isn't comfortable comfortable, I'm just not going to pull it out of my closet and wear it. This might be a weird one too, but I've also started taking a look at the material of clothes before I buy it. In particular, I stay far away from clothes that wrinkle easily because I know that realistically I'm not going to be pulling that out of my closet and ironing it every time I want to wear it. And maybe that's extremely lazy of me, but it's just realistic. I also started buying clothes that were just simpler in general. I tend to stay away from crazy patterns and gravitate towards the more muted or or neutral colors. This just makes getting ready so much easier and in particular I love this approach whenever you're traveling because it's really easy to work with a wardrobe that's comfy, mostly neutral, and wrinkle free. The next category I have stopped shopping for is shopping sales. In particular I mean whenever you're shopping just for the sake of shopping and you see an item that's on sale that you didn't need previously but you feel like you have to have it just because it's at such a great price. Now to be clear I I think it's completely different whenever you need an item and you've had your eye on it for a while and it just happens to be on sale. I like to use the browser extension Karma to save items that I've been looking into buying and this will give me notifications whenever this item changes price or goes on sale. So if I'm still in need of this item whenever it goes on sale I can scoop up that great price right away. But in general I tend to stay away from shopping sales because I know it could be a dangerous scenario where I'm picking up a bunch of items that I don't don't need. The next group of items I've stopped buying almost entirely is new makeup. Makeup used to be something that was a little bit of a hobby of mine. I used to love watching makeup YouTube videos and staying up to date with all of the new makeup releases, but over the years I've pretty much just found my favorite makeup items that I kept reaching for, and now I don't really feel the need to experiment because I feel like I've curated my collection. I've also been working from home for over a year and a half, which means that I'm just not wearing as much makeup anymore, which is kind of 
nice. It saved me both time and money. Another item I just don't buy anymore is souvenirs. This was a tough one because I love travel and I felt like souvenirs were a way that you could collect all of your travels and bring them home with you. But over the years, I found that souvenirs tend to be pretty low quality. I also feel like shopping whenever you're on a trip sometimes takes away some of the magic of being in the moment while you're on that trip. And instead of finding that perfect souvenir to take home with you, you're freeing up some time to explore that travel spot a bit more. I found my favorite way to remember trips has just been to take a bunch of pictures. This next group of items is something that I never really bought in the past, so I don't know if it really counts, but that is holiday decor. I don't really decorate for any holidays and maybe that's depressing to some people, but I live in a teeny tiny apartment and I just don't really have the space to store all of that stuff throughout the year. Nor do I want to lug a bunch of holiday decor things out of my apartment when I eventually move out. I love the holidays, but I don't think I'm going to be decorating for them anytime soon until I own a house. But even then I probably won't go too crazy. I tend to just make Spotify playlists for all of the different holidays and that puts me in the holiday spirit well enough. The next thing that I do not buy anymore is cable TV. And I don't think this one needs much of an explanation. Streaming services have completely taken over TV entertainment. And in this day and age, unless you're really tied to that one specific show on that one specific channel, I really just don't think cable is necessary. The next set of things I do not buy anymore is single use kitchen items. These are things like popcorn makers, ice cream makers, avocado slicers, egg crackers. I don't really like these items because they take up a whole lot of space and they're pretty rarely used. I tend to think that a pretty simple set of kitchen items can accomplish 99% of things that you might want to cook or bake. But obviously this one is going to be personal to you. If you're eating popcorn every day and your popcorn maker makes you that much happier, then I say go for it. Next item that I don't buy anymore are sponges. I think sponges are just really gross and I stopped using them a while ago. I remember in college there were five of us living together and we did not have a dishwasher so all of us roommates would use one single sponge to clean all of our dishes and that just grossed me out so much. And then of course one of us would get sick and suddenly that sickness is all over the house and I swear it was all lurking in that single sponge. Now I pretty much use a scrub brush like this or some sort of equivalent. This one is currently stained by turmeric so just ignore that. But I love this because you can just pop it in the dishwasher whenever you're running a load. So unlike a sponge it's constantly being disinfected and it lasts a whole lot longer. And maybe this is just me, but I also like that I don't actually have to have my hands in the water whenever I'm cleaning dishes. I don't know about you, but dishwashing is my least favorite chore. I would much rather do multiple loads of laundry than a sink full of dishes. So the more my hands are out of the action, the happier I am. And I also feel like it can actually clean my dishes because it's clean itself. The next item I've stopped buying entirely is bread. And that's because I've started to make my own bread. I follow this super simple recipe from Jenny can cook here on YouTube, which I'll link down below. The recipe is super simple. You essentially just add flour, instant yeast, water, and salt, and let that sit overnight. You form it into a ball the next day and then pop it into your Dutch oven, and it's finished in about an hour. It honestly tastes like restaurant quality bread. I highly recommend trying it out. It is super easy to make, and it'll be really hard to go back to that store-bought Wonder Bread. This is the Dutch oven that I use. I love this thing. I think I got it at Target. I do regret getting a Dutch oven that's so big just because I think the bread would form better in a smaller Dutch oven because it's a smaller recipe. So if you are interested in using this recipe, I'll link some smaller Dutch ovens in the comments below. The next item that I do not buy anymore is chicken broth or any broth really. I don't really know why I started buying broth in the first place. Growing up, my mom always just used bouillon cubes instead of broth in soups. And for those of you that don't know, you can essentially just make chicken broth at home if you use bouillon cubes with water. Water. But I think whenever I started cooking and started following recipes that said you need exactly two cups of chicken broth, I would just go out to the store and buy it. Broth is kind of annoying to buy too because it's pretty expensive for what you're getting out of it. And you're essentially just paying for water, which wastes on your grocery bag a lot. I recently discovered Better Than Bullion, which is kind of life-changing because it's so much more flavorful than bullion cubes. It's also a lot easier to control the amount that you're actually putting into your cooking because you don't have to measure everything out by 
cube size. I'm a big believer in tasting as you go whenever you cook, so it just makes the process a whole lot easier and it's way more flavorful. So that's all I have for you today. Those are some items that I've stopped buying almost entirely. Please let me know if there are any items that you have stopped buying entirely in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel to see more content in the future. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all are having an amazing day and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.